guys. With fall nearly on us, I've been busy ordering tons of parts for upcoming projects in the lab and stuff that I've been putting off forever to complete those projects like the Rover project and ah, a bunch of others. So today will be another mailbag. I've been printing like crazy, uh, doing a couple kind of neat projects that those fan blades at the beginning, those are actually uh, a turbine, a gas turbine, that turbo fan engine desktop model. Pretty neat right from Thingiverse. I love the way my i3 Mega is printing. It just works bloody fantastic. I've shared my settings as well. If you have one or need a place to start on your 3D printer, go to my GitHub and you can get those settings. Let's get on with the mailbag. Alrighty, super excited to play with some of this stuff. I got so many parts lately, it's crazy. First up, we have some sliding potentiometers. Check these out. Remember the old Pong games? Well, this is pretty much kind of the, the same idea. It's just a linear slide pot. And what I think we can do, possibly, what I would really like to do is interface this with a, a keyboard interface. So the Arduino, was it the Arduino Pro Micro? Or is it Pro Mini? I think the Pro Mini. Anyway, one of them can do keyboard emulation. And I would like to do this uh, for my volume controls in Adobe. So when I'm editing video, I can just do uh, my volume live and just do faders. It's, it's way easier than using the mouse control. Anyway, pretty cool. Got three of them. We'll see if we can make those work. Next up, we got a motor. Check this out. This is for the uh, Raspberry Pi Rover project. If you've been following the channel a while, you probably saw I got a kid's big wheel ride on uh, uh, 12 volt. It's actually a six volt uh, toy. And what I did is I went and got the 12 volt motor. Uh, what I was planning on doing, I'm going to make it a 12 volt system. And I thought, well, I'll just I'll just put 12 volt on it and it'll be fine. But the motor speed's going to be a little harder to manage at that. So I just, these things are cheap um, right out of eBay China. So I grabbed uh, the 12 volt version and yeah, pretty cool. Even comes with a different pinion gear. So we have two different pinions to choose from. I'm not sure what the tooth count on those, but eh, one of them will work. Next out of the box. Nothing to this. This is just Wemos D1 Minis. These are ESP8266 Wi-Fi enabled microcontrollers. Handy little form factor. I like the ESP8266 in the in the Wemos D1 form factor. It's it's just super handy. Good little boards. Next up, not sure what this. Ah, solder paste. I thought it was flux at first. So we got some 6337 mix, 37% lead. Uh, nothing to it. 10cc syringe. Pretty handy, good for surface mount soldering and using my reflow oven. You're going to see some custom PCBs coming up on the channel here. And I needed some more solder paste, so handy dandy. This is pretty cool. I saw these in some of the cell phone repair videos. And I see them on the videos of the Shenzhen market on any of the, the cell phone repair people are always using one of these mats. And this is a mat design that we can do repair on. It's silicone rubber. Um, not sure whether it's ESD safe or not. I really don't care at this stage. But basically we can work on it. It's non-slip and we've got all these cool little compartments that we put our screws in and they're even numbered, which is kind of neat. If you were to take notes or whatever, you would know exactly where the stuff is. Or when you're disassembling a component, in this case, you can tell it's kind of geared towards phones. You just put the screws in the location of where they came out of the board. Very, very neat. You could work left to right, or you could work inwards as you move up in layers or outwards as you move up in layers. So you could put your outside screws in the middle and work out whatever works for you. Uh, really handy. I like it uh, for really small screws and small stuff. You'll keep things from flying away. Very cool. I think this is a USB hub. Nothing to it. I needed a new USB hub for my upstairs PC because I've never had one. This is USB 3.0, or supposed to be, but what it has is a power switch and LED indication on every USB port. So you can just turn it off if you didn't want it in use. That's kind of a neat function. I kind of like it. And it is externally powered with just a wall wart and just plugs in on the side very handy. I think that'll work really, really good. And then I can just put my SD card reader and my different charge cables and everything, just leave them plugged in. And I'll just probably double-sided tape this down to the desk at the back. And then everything's right there at my fingertips. Very cool. I 
think these are displays. Indeed they are. These are SPI 128 by 128. 1.44 inch SPI TFT module. This is a full color display if I remember correctly. This is a kind of direct replacement for the Nokia 5110 except full color. I, I didn't even know these existed and I can't wait to give them a try. It's kind of neat. They even have the driver chip labeled on it. Well done. That's pretty cool that you don't see that from a supplier. Did they include it right on the board too? No, it's not on the silk screening, but all our Miso Mosey, everything, all of our SPI pins are well labeled and very cool little display. I, I don't think it'll be near as rugged as a Nokia 5110 because nothing will be, but a full color little display. Oh, we got to give this a try in a video. Look for this coming up. One more and I think we'll call it. We have, I don't know what chipsets on these. We're going to have to find out. I'm guessing this is probably a microcontroller with an 18650 battery backpack on it for using lithium ion batteries. And what have we got here? It's an ESP32, which is the new form, the new replacement for the ESP8266. Well, it's not new anymore, but it's an incredibly powerful little microcontroller. It's got a slide on off switch, which will be really handy for some projects. I, I love it. The onboard USB charging, so we can just stick an 18650 lithium ion battery in there, program our ESP32, put it to work, hook up to our GPIO for whatever we wanted to use, like that humidity project, the humidity monitor I did the other day on the channel. This would be great because self-contained battery, handy dandy, easy to charge. We could put it into deep sleep. I don't know what the voltage regulator on here is, whether it's a low current draw. Usually they're not, they're usually uh, not an LDO, but mm, we'll give it a try. We'll put them to good use. The price of these has come down a lot. They used to be like 20 bucks a piece. Uh, these are significantly cheaper now unless you buy them on Amazon if you want them like real quick. But uh, yeah, very cool. Love it. Can't wait to give these a try. More micros is gooder. Hope you like those parts. Click a thumbs up if you did. They'll be linked down below. I also keep them in my store. Some of them, if I like parts, I add them to my store each week. Linked below is our Discord chat. You can come over and join me. We can hang out and talk shop this fall. When the weather gets ugly, it's nice to be able to hang out with uh, other makers and chat about making kind of cool stuff. Cheers, guys. Hope you enjoyed that.